hire a chef. And, and that's what I think 2 Chainz did. He had a chef on a tour bus with him. He came with a cookbook, and this cat has to eat a certain way because his stomach is messed up. So he's like, I can't eat and do certain things on the road. So it's, it's possible, man, if you, if you really commit to it. Okay, I want to move, um, and hopefully Boosie comes home soon. They've been giving, I've been hearing so many release dates on Boosie. Oh, I don't know which don't one is know, real man. anymore. You uh, <laughs> uh, but hopefully he come home soon. I want to get into, uh, because, you know, brother, we, we we're wrong. We're going to be here to to midnight. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> we don't have to do another show, that's all. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're getting the information out that the people need to know. Talk with right. Show, talk with com, h2doc.com, log on today. Um, I want to talk about the health and hip hop. Yes, sir. And black entertainers. And then I want to move on to talking about HIV and things of that nature. Another thing right. that, that's hurting us. Um, we all know that these artists, they don't handle, they don't take, well, this is the perception that they give in the public. When they're in their music videos, they've got liquor in one hand, right. weed in the other, and when they when you listen to their songs, it's 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 Molly, <laughs> it's yep. it's dope, it's it's weed, it's everything else other than something healthy. And I I, I need you to speak on that aspect of how important it is for artists who are in that life who have the finances to have access to anything that they want. Yep. How important it is to keep their health while they're on no keep uh, maintain their health because they're on the road traveling live. Rick Ross. He had what a couple uh, seizures, seizures. Yeah. and Lil Wayne just had a seizure. Wayne we lost seizures. Webby yeah, we, seizures. Um, we have seizures. We have uh, we lost artists. We lost MC Bree. We lost Guru. We Pimp lost Steve. Nate Dog. Nate Dog. We lost, broke. Um, yeah, we we lost Isaac Hayes. We lost I, Michael Jackson. Exactly. All the health issues. So, right. speak on that just for a minute. I mean, uh, one simple fact, or one simple point, I guess, Taj to make to is that if you want to be successful in the game and stay around, you got to take care of your health. I mean, I mean, it's, you probably like Doc, you saying the same thing, but it is because that's what it is. Your most important possession is your health. If you want to continue making money in this industry, you know, you, you, how are you going to do it if you're in a hospital bed? How are you going to do it if you're having seizures? How are you going to do it if you're strung out on drugs? You know, I know some of those guys, you know, perform, they say, I think they perform better when they, they got a little buzz. They might be a little, a little more relaxed when they're smoking weed or whatever they think they're doing. But if you if you're not healthy, you can't you can't perform. So when I talk to these young artists, that's what I'm always stressing to them, man. Your exercise, and I think as a, as a society, we gotta we gotta remember first of all that these are just people. And you know, I have conversations with different hip hop artists, and they had the same issues, Todd, that me and you had. They got the, the crazy family member who just got arrested. That they got a you know, and, and usually the pressure's on them because they got more income. So they getting people out of jail and they paying other people's bills. So in many instances, the use of substances like alcohol or weed or whatever they might be doing. Is 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 treating some issue that they're dealing with. If they got stress or they they can't relax or they got anxiety, in many instances, people that have substance abuse issues, they're they're addressing an underlying issue, but they don't even realize they have it. So they smoke weed or they drink alcohol because they need to relax. They take you know Xanax pills or whatever because they need to relax. You know, so what one in four Americans, first of all, will have an alcohol or drug problem at some point in their lives, and that that includes all races. You know, and many of these people are, are young people, 12 years and older. You know, that's a, like 40 million people in our country have the medical criteria for a substance use disorder involving alcohol, nicotine, or other drugs. And, you know, talk about alcohol and tobacco. They probably kill more people than marijuana. So don't get it twisted. Alcohol and tobacco are drugs. They just happen to be legal. So when I talk to these young people, I always try to stress how important their health is to not only themselves but to their careers. And if you are not able to perform, you can't, you can't do concerts. There was a bunch of rumors about Webby, you know, missing concerts because he had seizures and that kind of stuff. And he went off on a guy interview him about it, you know. But there was some truth to that. There was some concerts they said he missed because his health was not not together. So I, I don't know, Todd, what else I can say other to, to a young man other than not only your performance but also to those that care about you. And that's what I tell my patients. If you love your daughter, many of those young, these young men and, and women have children. If you love your daughter, you love your son. If you love your mother and your father, whoever it is in your life that you care about, by abusing drugs and drugs of abuse, you could potentially not only you know lose your career but lose your life because people die, people overdose on this stuff too. I mean, look at look at the the, the young man from Criss Cross, you know what I'm saying? And they said that he had some depression issues or some things like that going on uh, at the time, you know, because of his 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 career, his his, his hair, whatever was happening in his life. And we don't we will never know that. But he took his own life. And I always tell young people too, Todd, suicide is a permanent answer 
to a temporary problem. Because if you take your life, we can't even resolve it. You know, uh, ODB, they thought he had some, you know, some, some, some psychological issues. They say, what's your boy name out of Atlanta? You, you know, not Jeezy, but uh, the cat. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Taj? Uh, uh, um, T.I. Luda? No, uh, man. Put the, put, the, put the tattoo on his face. Uh, Gucci. Uh, uh, oh, Gucci man. Gucci man. Yeah, Gucci man. Gucci man. You know, they say he, you know, right before he did that or right after he did that, I think he went into a, 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 a mental institution for some help. So I think the stigma around mental health is a big issue that we ignore. And, you know, that has to be addressed in the black community as well. We can't ignore um, depression and anxiety and use drugs and abuse to try to mask those effects. You know, so, yeah, I mean, from from substance abuse to an actual health issue like hypertension, diabetes, like little boots had with a seizure disorders like Webby Wayne and seizure, uh, Webby Wayne and, and uh and um uh, I think even Chris Brown had some type of seizure or something at one point. You know, they said that was stress related. So yeah, man, we got we've got to be serious about the most important thing that we that we own, and that's our own health. Now <clears throat> we just we just talked about um, artists and being able to not being able to travel. Um, not being able to perform due to health issues. We right. all know that touring can be physically demanding. Yes, sir. So what can artists do on a tour bus or on their planes? What can they do to maintain a healthy um, a nutritional lifestyle while they're on them tours and on their road? I think if you're on the, on, the, on, the, on the level where you could hire somebody, and many of these guys have access to, and in, in many of those cities, man, you know, call before you go. Look, these are the requirements for my artists. You know, they have managers and people. You know, he needs this type of food. He needs he needs to make sure he's hydrated. So you have, you know, your pre-concert food ready for you, your after-concert food ready for you, and you got to make a priority. Unless you're getting paid to do that after party, sometimes you don't need to go. You need to go back to the hotel room and go to sleep, go back to the tour bus and go to sleep because that's not your home environment. You know, some guys just don't adapt well. You know, I can't. If I travel to and go sleep in a hotel for the first night, I just don't sleep well. That's not why I sleep every night. So making those adjustments, those changes, you know, you're up all night, you're sleeping all day. It's like being a, being, being a shift worker. And one of the issues that I have with shift workers is inability to lose weight and sleep issues and part of the stress on the body. When, we, when our bodies are stressed, we release a hormone called cortisol, and that increases weight gain, can increase blood pressure. So if you have these real bad schedules and you're not sleeping well, a lot of things can happen to the body, and the body will shut down at some point. So you gotta you got to find some way to rest. You are a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? So there's things that you could do. If Lil Wayne showed up in Baton Rouge at night and wanted to eat free at any restaurant in this town, he could do it, you know what I'm saying? Not even eat free necessarily, but definitely get, get a meal that he would want because people want him in, his, in, in their establishment. So you've got to take advantage of that, you know what I'm saying? If you if you got that kind of clout that you can walk into place and not only eat but eat what you want to eat, then take advantage of that. The steak and, and the champagne and the, and the big baked potatoes with the extra right. bacon cheese, we can't do that every night, you know what I'm saying? And, again, you've got to – Invest in your own health. You've got to realize that, that you are the most important thing you have. Now, the reason that Lil Wayne is successful is because Lil Wayne got bars. He's spitting bars on in, when he go on stage, and people like his style and his swag. So if he's in the hospital bed, he's not spitting bars, and the money is stopping. He's not like a realtor who can make money when he's playing golf and somebody's trying to buy a house. He's got to be on stage to make his money other than endorsement. So to me, I don't see how it's that hard for those cats to understand that. All right. Now, we, we, we also know that, of course, with, with with all that success comes a lot of money. A lot of money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, record labels are making money. Film companies are making money. Uh, <laughs> uh, model agencies are making money. Everybody's making money. Sometimes Should... artists are not, though, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're making more than the average worker. But, right. You know. Um, Should record labels and film companies require entertainers to carry health and life insurance you know, um, and a physical to kind of like an insurance. You know, shouldn't they have insurance? Shouldn't the film companies and record labels have insurance on their uh, on their artists, or on their actor actresses, and also? I think if know, I was an artist, I would demand it. I would demand it, Taj. I would be like, you know, part of my contract is this: I want I want health insurance, and they're gonna have to have a different type of health insurance because it's got to cross state state lines. So you need to make sure that my coverage is gonna work wherever I go. You know what I'm saying? So part of my deal is that I want, man, health insurance is at, at the most on an expensive level with affordable care. You can find a, a policy for, for a young and up-and-coming guy for less than, 
you know, the, the price of a cell phone bill per month for just some basic, what we call catastrophic insurance. That's when you fall off and break your leg and just got to gotta go to the hospital. But you can get the <laughs> platinum and gold package plans for two, $3,000. So you're talking about a, a, a record label like RCA that can't insure an agent, I mean, uh, one of their, 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 their clients as a part of deal for a couple thousand dollars when they're making millions of dollars off of what you do. I don't see, I would, I would, I would fight for that. You know what I'm saying? I think the, the actors guild and the writers guild and the, and the hip hop artists guild, they need a guild where the hip hop artists come together and say, man, there's certain things that we should demand from these labels so that we can be taken care of. If something happens to us so that our families can be taken care of as well, you know, whether, and not just the health policies, but life policies and all that stuff, man. I mean, these cats got to think a little bit beyond. This is a, what Jay Z said, this is a business. I'm a businessman, not a businessman. You know what I'm saying? So it's, this is right. a business. You are, you are an entity. You're a brand, you know. If I'm Lupe Fiasco, I'm D1. I'm I'm loving pain. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm an entity, man. So I need to make those people take care of me, and that's I think they should demand that. The hip hop doc right here on the Talk with Todd show. Log on to the official website h 2 doc dot com. All right, and log on to this official website for the interview talkwithtodd dot com. Man, we went through it all. We've talked about uh, uh, talked about heart disease. We've talked about everything from heart disease all the way down to strokes. We talked about the uh, entertainers and entertainers that we've lost to health issues and what they can do and what their companies can do to ensure that their celebrities are around for a long period of time. Um, now let's get into the other part of health, and that is, you know, one of the main killers in, in America, and that is H. IV, STDs, and uh, things of that nature. Now, what I want to ask you on that is, when it comes to HIV, because I had this discussion with somebody the other day, we, we was debating hard. Here we go. <laughs> but, <laughs> Here we go. I got, I got I when, it coming. <laughs> what, how can a person contract HIV and AIDS with other than uh, uh, sexual intercourse? So you're talking about the men having sex with men or just... just? I'm just talking about AIDS and HIV in, in general. In general. How can um, you contract the disease other than sex? How can you contract the disease other than sex? I mean, I think, I, think I'm, I might not be understanding you right. Um, okay. I mean, the, the way that HIV is contracted is through the exchange of blood and body fluids. So fluids. very rarely do we see it through blood transfusions, which, you know, used to happen before they started to screen blood. But it's through, it's, through, it's through sexual contact. You know, of course, IV drug abusers because they're sharing needles. But the most right. common, the common route of, of exchanging blood and body fluids is through, you know, intimate contact. And one of the issues with the men having sex with men is because through anal sex, that's an aggressive sex. The mucous membranes are broken down, and, and, and the giver is 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 able to if, if if I'm if I'm if I'm the gay man that's that's giving sex to the other man, and I'm and I'm infected with HIV, then the, the likelihood of passing that virus on to the other man is much higher than if he had it and I was doing it. So there's a whole lot of caveats to that and how it happens. I think at the end of the day, what we need to recognize is this disease is killing our population. African Americans are the highest infected population of individuals in the United States, and so. You know, we are estimated, I think, in 2010, 44% of all new HIV infections among adults and adolescents were, were amongst African Americans, and we only make up 13.9, 14% of the population. I live in the South, and Louisiana has been ranked in the top 10 for the last 10 years, and Baton Rouge and New Orleans itself has been either number one or two in any given year in the last couple of years as far as the number of newly diagnosed cases. I'm talking about my little small city, Baton Rouge, which is less than a million people in this city. And we rank number one for the number of newly diagnosed cases in the country uh, at some point. And that's, that's crazy, Todd. I mean, so, yeah, when you talk about transmission through the exchange of blood and body fluids, IV drug abuse, you know, heterosexual contact, um, and men having sex with men, those are the top things that you hear about, you know, as far as the transmission. I mean, what was the debate about? Now, the, the other question that I have, for those who get it, they feel like pretty much their life is over. Or, you know, at some point they will probably, you know, die due to um, them contracting the disease. Even though they do have treatments for them, at some point it will come to an end. Now, is it possible for somebody with HIV and AIDS to have a dating situation or a relationship with the treatment that they're taking? If they're treated, can right. that person have a relationship? 
the, the, if, 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 I, if, if, if I'm dating a woman who's HIV positive and she's taking her medications, the, re, the risk is reduced um, if she uh, fully complies with, you know, the doctor's instructions. That means taking the medication that's prescribed. There's something called an HIV viral load. That's how much virus is in the body. So if the HIV viral load is, is, is significantly reduced, and when we draw blood, it will say less than a certain amount or less than. It's like undetectable, so the viral load is undetectable. And there's CD4 count, which is the immune system. That CD4 count is elevated. Um, and neither partner has an additional sexually transmitted disease, like, say, you know, chlamydia, gonorrhea. Those other STDs increase your risk of transmitting the virus. So if all those things are in place, the the risk is significantly reduced, but to actually have unprotected sex with that person still increases your risk of getting HIV. You still have a chance of getting HIV. So the, you can have heterosexual contact or in, intimacy with someone, but you have to wear condoms. You have to wear condoms. But you talk about a perfect situation, too, Taj. I mean, they're on their medications if they have prescribed them. Their viral load is is undetectable. Their CD4 count is 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 healthy. A healthy CD4 count. But that CD4 count basically talks about how the immune system is functioning, uh, and again, they're taking medications prescribed, and then but you still have to wear condoms. So the risk of the risk of transmission basically varies on what they call that viral load, uh, and that's very unique to each individual. So you have to use consistently and correctly. You have to use those condoms to lower the transmission transmission risk. Interestingly, Todd, I check this out. You have two infected people. The females got HIV. The males got HIV. Even, even if all those uh, instances are, are in, in place, if they have unprotected sex, they could transmit a different strain of HIV to the next person. So they still have to wear condoms. This virus is a very, very sloppy virus, and it mutates frequently. So that's why it's hard to come up with a treatment for it because we don't know. If you, we develop medicines based off of the chemical structure of the, of the virus. So if, if, if I give you a medicine that's based on the virus being shaped in a certain, you know, certain way, it's going to work until that virus mutates. So HIV is a very sloppy virus that mutates pretty frequently, so it's hard to treat it. That's why you got so many different classes of medications. The bad thing about it is if you start taking the medicine and then get off of it for a while, in theory you can't get back on that medicine because the body has adjusted to it and mutated and now it is resistant to that medicine. So once you start antiretroviral therapy, which means the medicines to fight HIV, you've got to stay on it and take it like the doctor prescribes and tells you until he decides to change or take you off because if you stop taking it when you're not supposed to, the virus will mutate, and the next time you try to take it, the drug probably won't work for you. So it's, it's a very complex mm. and intri- intricate thing, man. It, it, it's quite scary, uh, actually, you know. And so, like you said, can people live a long time with HIV? Yeah. Unfortunately, that's that's a myth, not a myth, that's kind of the image that's being perpetuated. So some people feel like, well, shoot, the HIV ain't killing folks like it used to be. Man, please. There's all the things out there that if, if I had to choose a disease, it wouldn't be HIV. Uh, and I work in the prison system too, Todd, and I see yeah. young men dying from this stuff on a regular basis. And uh, it's it's a scary, scary disorder. Well, the, re- the reason I ask that question is because you got people who, you have a young lady, first time having sex, and she met, she trusts a guy. She's, she loves him, she trusts him. Right. She may not even love him, she just trusts him, and she contracts the disease. First time having sex. Oh, yeah. You have some people who are so mad and angry that they – Instead of staying away from people and going to get treated right. and, and not doing it, they get angry and they want to give it to anybody they can run into. Yep, and there's cases because of that. They, I'm sure you've heard about it. There's several cases yeah. of that. Do people, and that's, that's considered murder, attempted murder. Murder. Now, and because they feel like, like the average person thinks, and that's why I asked you this question, that their life is done. They will never be able to date again. They'll never right. be able to have sex again. Right. I because they know going. nobody's going to sleep with an affected person. So that's right. why I really wanted to ask that question for those who, who are listening, who may know somebody who have it or somebody who's listening that does have it, that in a, uh, in a situation you might still be able to. Oh, it's not still, man. It's, not, it's, it's definitely not a death sentence, like I said. And, and maybe I, 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 put that in, I put that out there wrong. I don't want it, and I don't want anybody to have it, but it's, it's, it's real, you know, and it's, ha- it's happening. You know what I'm saying? It's happening to people. But can you have a healthy relationship if someone, you know, because there are children that are born to HIV-positive parents that had nothing to do with this, and I've worked with those children before. And that's a very disheartening and sad situation when you had nothing to do 
with this, and your parents gave it to you. So you come in the world with this disorder or this disease, and you had nothing to do. You know, it wasn't your fault. You didn't have unprotected sex. You didn't cheat on your girlfriend or cheat on your boyfriend. So, yeah, so those people can, or those individuals can have healthy relationships, but there's still some, some precautions that they have to use and definitely some protocols that they have to follow. But can they have healthy relationships? Can they date? Can they have a healthy sexual intimacy with someone? Definitely. But it has to be, you know, done properly. And there's a lot of education and precaution that you have to take with that. So definitely it's not a death sentence. You know, it's not a death sentence. I mean, HIV does kill, but under the proper medication and management and you taking care of your body and doing the same things, Todd, we talked about to prevent heart disease, to prevent strokes, to prevent, you know, diabetes. you got to eat healthy. you got to exercise. There's a lot of things that you still got to do. Your life is a little bit more detailed and intricate, but you can live and have a healthy intimacy with someone as long as you're taking care of your body. All right. Oh, deep. Giving it all to y'all. <laughs> man, you, 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 you with that tonight, man. You you all over me tonight, man. I ain't get a break in this conversation. <laughs> well, you know, health, man, health is a very broad conversation. It is. It is. And, you know, and, and everybody wants to be healthy. Even people who are overweight want to be able to lose weight. They don't know how, or they're not confident enough, or they don't think they can lose the weight. Right. So, I mean, there's so many different ways, so different different levels that we can touch on the subject. Um, I want to end off by letting, allowing you to speak on, um, you said you were doing something for the American um, Heart American Association. Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me run it real quick, Ty, so I can get it for okay. your listeners. It's called the Most Powerful Voices um contest uh the american heart and stroke association and television network up uh, are doing this contest and this is the fifth year and the competition is a part of their power to end stroke cause campaign american heart and american stroke association is something called a power to end stroke cause campaign i was blessed enough to work with yolanda king before she passed martin luther king's daughter who was our first ambassador to spread the word about heart disease and stroke Stroke, as you know, was a leading cause of death in the African-American community, but the fourth leading cause of death in our country and a leading cause of disability. And this contest, man, is really cool. It's open to all those who are 18 year older, independent artists, uh, groups, choirs, those who sing gospel, holy hip-hop, praise and worship music. Um, and basically you just you, you use your powerful voice to uh, to try to win some really cool prizes. The winners of the contest, well, the winners of the online contest, the top ten are judged by myself, Latisse Crawford, and some other gospel artists. And they get to win uh, a performance at the 2015 Stellar Awards. They get cash prizes. They get personal coaching. Uh, they get a digital single. They get music instruments from the Rolling Corporation and so much more. And even if you don't want to sing in the contest, if you register as a voter for one of your friends or family who ever singing or just go online and just want to listen to some cool groups, there's prizes that you get, and they also mail you some information about stroke and stroke awareness. So this is my fifth year doing it, and this is the fifth year since they they started doing the Most Powerful Voices Award. Um, for more information, you can tell the listeners to go to mostpowerfulvoices.org, or you can go to strokeassociation.org um, and get more information. But cool contest, online judge, and look, man, these people, I mean, there's some talent in this contest, Todd. So you got some people that can blow. Like I said, they got rappers on there. But it's all inspirational music. You don't have to necessarily have a message about stroke or heart disease. But many of the the listeners in the past and uh, some of the singers in the past have had some personal experiences. Their mother might have had a heart attack or their mother had a stroke or grandfather had something. So they were inspired to write a song or sing a song. You can you can even do uh, something that's not original. But uh, we encourage some original pieces as well. You can do videos. So just go to their website. Again, you can go to Network Up. You can go to MostPowerfulVoices.org, StrokeAssociation.org. You can even tweet uh, Latisse Crawford, our final Instagram. She is so cool, man. I did an interview with her sister. Mm-hmm. And like I said, she uh, she did not win. Um, I think she came in second place on uh, Sunday's Best, but she won the Hearts of America, and she is torn. She's got a reality show. Just just down-home people, man, a loving sister, and uh, she's got a heart of gold, and she's just trying to really raise awareness, man. She Anytime I call her and say, Latisse, I need you to go on an interview with somebody, she does it. Um, so it's, it's just been a blessing to work with her as well. Yeah. <clears throat> dot com, and also log on to the Hip Hop Doc, official website, h2.com. All right? Now, man, we we talked about it all. <laughs> I don't think we, <laughs> Everything I don't but think the state of the union, man. We just didn't do. We, we, that's, that's the only thing we didn't get to. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually uh, coming up. 
coming up. That's actually that's coming up. And I yes, gotta sir. I gotta I gotta check out Barack, see what's good. Um what is the message you would like to get across to the people right now? Taj, there's so much stuff like you said that we've talked about so many so many platforms that I've been blessed to be on, but I guess if I had to leave my my family and my listeners with one message, it would be that the most important possession is your health. So invest in your health and really subscribe to those Life Simple 7. You know, find a doctor first of all to help you manage your blood pressure, your blood sugar, your cholesterol. But we've also got to exercise, eat healthy, maintain a healthy weight. You know, we've got to do those things, Taj, in order to stay alive and uh, and stay healthy. So um, I can't leave you with one message because there's so many messages, but I guess investing in your health and researching these things, finding out what it is that you need to do to make yourself healthier. There's too many resources out there for us to be to be blind. You know, they always say, you know, if, if if you don't know about something, then you're not responsible for it. We have no excuse now with the Internet, with with platforms like, you know, Talk With Taj, uh, the American Heart and hey. Medical Association. I mean, seriously, though, man, you, you're doing a great yeah. service to your listeners, brother, and, and uh, you, you're saving lives. So I, I don't care if it's one listener. And when I talk Taj, it could be five people or 5,000. I'm putting it all out there, and I listen to a couple of your shows, and I, I see what you're doing, man. And that's that's this is a great. A, I appreciate a it. Hopefully, you have me back on, man. If there's any particular topic that you somebody had a heart attack, you just need five minutes of my time. Say, Doc, just run it to me real quick. What happened? How we deal with it, or what do we do? Just call me, man. But I think this is a this is an important platform, and, and I think you need to definitely keep that health segment of of the Taj, talk with Taj to roll it, man. Because you you got some you got you got some viewership, and you got you you got a responsibility, man. We both do. We both do. Sir, well, thank you very much, man, for your time. Um, you know, definitely come back whenever we have. Uh, like I said, I'll definitely be calling you back. I always have guests on for multiple, multiple uh, conversations because there's always something different going on. You know, uh, there's always a new, new disease, or there's always a new health kick or new health watch. Um, oh, you know what? Before you go, <laughs> I, 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 I forgot about something. Uh oh, talking about okay. other things. Forgot about something. I want to get this. I want to. I want people to hear this because I think we get so wrapped up in you know. Even though I'm media, sometimes the news they they plug you one thing, and yeah. I think the American public is so easily influenced by the news that you know, the, the, the information that they give on the news that we don't take the time out to investigate for ourselves. Exactly. The flu shot. Yes. Okay. They they encourage people every year to get a flu shot. Right. But in some, you know, there was uh, there was some cases where flu shots actually hurt; they didn't help. Mm-hmm. What is your thoughts on the flu shot? Should people, when flu season get here, should people run out and get a flu shot, or should they just, you know, if they if they if they happen to get the flu, then they just worry about it then and they treat it? Or what is your thoughts on the flu shot? The flu, you know, it's, it's it. There's a lot of there's some conspiracy theories out there, Todd. Um, and I did did an interview on on a national TV or radio program, and a military guy called in, and this kind of shut up everybody. He said, you know, in the military they made us get the flu shot, and nobody's died. And he said we're providing national security to the whole world. I think what we 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 got to understand, you know, they got a bunch of Illuminati theory theories theorists out there, and all the kind of stuff we got going on. The flu shot is designed to protect us against the most virulent strains of the virus that they have in the community at the time. So, like this year, they have a trivalent, which means three quadrivalent, which means four types of viruses. They have two different types of shots. The flu tends to target the young and the elderly and those that are immune compromised. So if you get the flu, people die from the flu. We had a seven-year-old boy die here in Louisiana about a week ago, and it just devastated the community because I don't think people realize how devastating it can be. Um, So as a medical physician, and in all my expertise and knowledge, and, and, you know, if, if there is some conspiracy theory, there's some kind of stuff, I don't know anything about it. But we recommend that you get the flu shot because if you have that immunization, it protects others. Uh, do they have bad batches of flu uh, vaccines? Yes, they've had that happen before. You know, they've had contaminated medicines in the stores. But it, what amazes me, Todd, is that as, 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 as American citizens, we'll go to certain places and buy certain things uh, without any research or knowledge behind it. But you come to the doctor's office and you'll question everything that I tell you to do. You know, it's like, you know, and I don't have a problem with that because, you know, my knowledge base is solid. And if it's something that I don't know, if you bring a diet to me or medication to me that I don't know, I'm going to tell you I don't know it, but let me research and I'll get back to you tomorrow. But my medical training allows me to learn about that a lot faster than you would because you don't really have the background to do it. So getting back to the flu shot, yes, I recommend it. Yes, there have been some issues with that, you know, in general, in most cases with the flu shot, the only thing I have is maybe a low, uh, low-grade low illness or some tinnitus at the site of injection. 
but there have been, been very few documented cases of actual death uh, from these shots, and, and some people will tell you differently. Um, but we also know that if you get the flu shot and then you end up getting a pneumonia, then you can actually die from this. And like I tell you, we lost a seven-year-old young young man here in uh, Louisiana. And, I mean, you know, you, people, well, that was just one person. No, that's huge, you know, to lose one person to any disease or disorder. Right. Thing. So if you have questions or issues about it, talk to your doctor directly. And, and you know, don't just don't disregard it. I'm not going to get it without the knowledge that you, that you need to have, you know, and I, I think that's a big deal. The, the, the African American community particularly has a trust in their their primary care doctors and their physicians, and so I have open heart discussions with my patients about whether it be flu shot, HIV, whatever it is, and they feel comfortable making their own. I want to give my patients let them make an educated decision, and so if they decide not to, and something does happen, hey, we talked about this, and you knew the risk, and 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 and, and so you made you made a, you made an educated, conscious decision on it, and we're just going to have to deal with it now, you know, and and that's kind of how I run my practice based on interaction with my patient and what decisions that they want to make. Uh, so I educate my patients the best I can, and then we, we go from there. Do I get upset if they don't do something I ask them to do? Uh, I might be a little miffed, but at the end of the day, I still want them to come back to me, so I just have to know that everybody's a little bit different, and, 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 and sometimes it takes me two years to get somebody to stop smoking as compared to one person comes in and the day I tell them, hey, bro, your pressure's high, you're going to have a stroke tomorrow, they stop that same day cold turkey. So it's the same way with the flu shot. Same way we're wearing condoms, same way we're texting and driving, all those issues, you know, come through the office every day, man. So it's a constant. It's not Taj just talking about blood pressure, cholesterol, and diabetes. We're talking about wellness. And when you talk about health, health is, you know, like you said, blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. Wellness means you are spiritually straight, you physically straight, you mentally straight. All those things come into play, you know what I'm saying? So when you talk about the wellness of a person, it's the totality of health. It's not just that one aspect of your blood pressure being a little high, but are, you know, how's your spiritual background and, and how's your family health and, you know, how's your mental health, all that stuff makes a difference when you're trying to help somebody to live a longer life and be functional and be happy in society. It's, all that plays a part. Ronnie Willfield, a.k.a. the Hip Hop Doc. And had a blast with you, man. I, I already knew. I already knew when I woke up today. I said this is going to be one hell of an interview. And, I hope I uh, hope I was able to share some some knowledge with the with the listeners, man. Man, I know you did, and I, I hope that people take this information seriously. Uh, you know, it, it's like a pastor at church. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you talk every Sunday, and some people still don't get it. You know what I mean? But hopefully, they know that people are able to take something away from this conversation and use it in their day-to-day life. That's what we try to do here on the Talk With Todd Show is educate and entertain, and I think we did both tonight. So uh, thank you for um, the time. Appreciate it. Log on to the official website at uh, h2doc, that's the letter H, number 2, doc.com uh, yes, today for more information. And, um, you know, we thank everybody for listening. And, you know, till next time on the Talk With Todd Show. possible, man, if you, if you really could.